Hi folks, Greg Marchand here again with a virtual instructional ed training program brought to you by the Service Sales Academy. And again, we're gonna bring you a technical knowledge for service advisors edition, this time on the malfunction indicator lamp. What does it mean? Question your customers often have, right? Now, remember why we do the technical knowledge thing and if you're a technician watching this or you have a technician background, remember, we're at the 30,000 foot level here, maybe the 60,000 foot level. We're just trying to gain enough technical knowledge as a service advisor to be able to have a conversation with a customer, to be able to grow our confidence during those conversations with the customers, and to be able to collect better information from the customer and have better conversations with technicians. All right, so this is just a, this is just a basis to build confidence for that sales discussion. We're not learning how to fix cars here. Why do we have a check engine light? Or the malfunction indicator lamp technically is what we call it, right? The reason we have it is it alerts the vehicle operator of a problem related to exhaust emissions. And emissions are a big deal in many parts of the country. It will also alert the vehicle operator of a problem that, re that could relate <laughs> to catastrophic failure of the catalytic converter. Why that? Because the catalytic converter, when all is said and done, is the number one emissions component on the automobile. And so the federal government wants to protect it at all costs because that's what cleans up the majority of our emissions, believe it or not. If you don't know what we're talking about, there's a big old picture of it, all right? So it's the check engine light. Everybody knows it as the check engine light. What's the customer going to notice? Well, it's either going to be on, and it's going to be on steady like that last picture we had, or it's gonna be flashing. Now flashing's a bad thing. Some real technical stuff real quick, just in case you wanna know it, in case you wanna hear it. By law, that malfunction indicator lamp must be illuminated if anything goes wrong with any engine component or engine control component that could result in engine emission levels rising above, I should say tailpipe emission levels, rising above one and a half times the federal test procedure standard. What? Look, essentially, emissions relates to how well fuel is burned. If we don't burn it very well, we get a lot of nastiness out the tailpipe, and that nastiness relates to air pollution and, and poor air quality and smog and acid rain and all kinds of other stuff. The bottom line is, and this is what I use with a lot of customers, bad emissions, i.e. check engine light on, bad fuel economy. Right? They, they look to most of them, it's a light that comes on. And as long as the car is still operating like they think it ought to, and well, it doesn't seem to be affected too much, they're going to keep on driving it. But a majority of them, if they think that light comes on and their fuel economy is suffering because of it, you know what? That hits them in the wallet and they're going to pay attention and they're going to bring it in to you. All right? So, yeah, I, I simplify it and I put bad emissions equals bad fuel economy. Well, it does. Does it mean other things too? Yes, it certainly does, and we could go down that rabbit hole as well, but we're not going to. So just remember, if that check engine light's on, and it's not flashing, it's flashing a whole nother ball, ball game. Check engine light's on steady, then fuel economy is probably suffering, and that alone is a good reason for the customer to come in for diagnosis. Now, if we're gonna to explain to the customer that if the mill's on, then they probably have some poor fuel economy, then we've got a better shot at selling them some diagnosis. Because again, it hits them right in the wallet. You know that customers don't always worry about that light coming on unless they see some sort of performance drop or the car's behaving funny or they perceive it's behaving funny or, uh-oh, it's costing me some more money. What do they need to do? If that light's on steady, you tell them that they need to bring it in for diagnosis. As long as it seems to be running okay and the light's not flashing, then they can drive it to you and you'll be happy to diagnose what the problem is and get it repaired for them. If that light's flashing, they need to pull that car over on the side of the road and have that vehicle towed to you immediately because that flashing mill light essentially means the catalytic converter could have a meltdown. And if it has a meltdown, we won't get into what worst case could be, a significant thermal event. If it has a meltdown, it's gonna cost a lot more money most likely. So we wanna protect the catalytic converter. If the check engine light's flashing, have them pull over and have that vehicle towed to the shop immediately for diagnosis and repair. In terms of mill diagnosis, 
Don't forget, check out the video selling mill diagnosis. There's a much longer discussion on check engine light diagnosis and how to sell that to your customers on that video. You can find that on the Service Sales Academy app or you can find it on the Service Sales Academy website and very soon you can find it in the learning management system through CTI. Any check engine light that comes on needs to be diagnosed. All right, and that's, that's the first step. There's also a, a diagnosis video out there. Um, there's, there's selling diagnosis to your customers' videos. Check those out. Once it's diagnosed, then we can give them a repair estimate. But we can't give them anything other than uh, an estimate as to what that first hour or that first set of diagnostic tests is going to cost them until we know what's going on, right? What can cause a mill? They're gonna ask you this. <laughs> the thing is, there's so many things, uh, many, 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 many things can cause a check engine light to come on. You can't, you can't answer that question for the customer. There's just too many things it could be. It could be, it could be inputs to the computer. It could be wiring that delivers the inputs to the computer, wiring that delivers the output from the computer to the output device. Could be the computer itself. Could be the output device. Could be all kinds of things. But they say to you, you've got that magic computer that tells you what's wrong though. So why can't you tell me what's, what the problem is? I mean, you plug the computer in, it spits out a code, you're all set. Here's what you need to understand. DTCs, or Diagnostic Trouble Codes, they describe the test that the computer ran that failed. And they'll basically tell you what failed. But here's the problem. They don't pinpoint the exact problem. They'll tell you the general system that failed. They might tell you exactly which test failed, and maybe what the possibilities could be. But the thing is, the computer is not smart enough to tell you exactly what failed because it can't run enough tests. It's not your master diagnostic technician. So therefore, the technician is gonna have to do some pinpoint tests and figure out exactly what's wrong. Those DTCs, they're a guide, they're not an answer. The mill cannot tell you exactly what's wrong. And it just can't perform those pinpoint tests like the technician does. And also, it can't turn itself off. Now here's the caveat to that, right? Because sometimes the light does go off. Well, way back long ago, if you're old enough to remember this with OBD1, we had what we called ghost codes. And that just meant that the customer would call us up and the, said the light was on, we'd make an appointment. And by the time they showed up, light was off. We had nothing to look at. We had no codes back then either. And then OBD2 came along in the late 90s, 97, 98, 99 that age range and the light we were told couldn't turn itself off well it can but it's only going to turn itself off if it runs three consecutive tests in which it does not see anything wrong but see it's not going to clear the code out so if the mill is not on when the customer does come in, that means something to the technician. Uh, you can tell the customer that there are occasions where, where the computer can turn the light off, but we still need to investigate what it thought it saw for it to turn that light on. Now, a couple things of note. Oftentimes, I get this phone call all the time, right? When the check engine light comes on, oh my goodness, my, my, my track light's on, my ABS light's on, my charge light's on, my, my 4x4 light's on, my, all these lights are on. Yeah, oftentimes they'll turn, the manufacturers will turn those other lights on to get the operator's attention and say, hey, look, you know what? <laughs> Something seriously is wrong with your car. So let's go get it taken care of. Because if that just that one little light comes on, yeah, you know how customers are, sometimes they don't want to get it taken care of. So all these other lights come on for one of two reasons, either to get their attention or to say, hey, you know what? This system, this, this whatever it may be, traction control, anti-lock brake system, it's a, this system is not going to operate or operate properly as long as that check engine light is on. So bottom line is if all these lights on the dash come on, it's just to get their attention. Quick summary. The mill's flashing, they gotta tow it to you. The mill's on steady, we've gotta diagnose it and repair it because it just means that emissions levels are above a federal standard, which also means that as long as that check engine light is on, there is poor fuel economy. So they're gonna want it diagnosed and repaired. And remember, those diagnostic trouble codes, it's a general direction to take in terms of diagnosis. It doesn't give us the answer. There could be all kinds of things that cause that test to fail and that code to set. And that's where our master diagnostic technicians come in and all the tools and training that we spend a ton of money on 
for these men and women come into play. Folks, keep up the great work. And until next time, never stop learning.